morning and welcome to Blackstone Valley United Methodist Church. Glad to have you all here today and those of you who are watching from home as well. Uh, today we're going to continue looking at the book of Ephesians and thinking about what it means to be the church and um, how we are called to, to live as God's people. And we're also going to welcome Rita into membership officially with our church. So we'll say more about that when we get to that point. Uh, coming up this week on Saturday, we have drive-in movie night at the Sherry's. Uh, that was in the newsletter, and we'll send you a reminder on Friday in the e-news. And if you have any questions, you can see Mike and Audrey, and they'll fill you in. So now let us turn our hearts to worship. Let us join in our call to worship. Christ, our Lord, unites his followers together in Christian love. His presence our of the when Christ is our life, our fellowship takes on the nature of Christ. We experience unity, love, and humility toward one another. than anyone else I know. This friend goes rafting and canoeing and kayaking and rock climbing and mountain biking and backpacking, all those really cool things. And he has a lot of fun. But he never leaves on one of these adventures without reminding himself to watch out for danger. Because he knows that in order to really have fun, safety is important. So when he's canoeing, he wears his life jacket and a and when he uh, is out on the canoe, he watches for those rocks under the water so he doesn't hit them with the canoe and flip over. And when he's rock climbing, he wears a helmet and a harness and he listens for loose rocks that might hit him on the head. And when he's backpacking, he wears dry socks and good sturdy shoes and he watches and listens to the weather so he can stay dry and comfortable. He always wears his safety gear, right? Because he knows that avoiding danger is the best way to be safe. So when you want to have fun, it's no fun if you get into trouble or run into a problem that you're not prepared for. So our Bible story today 
our reading, is about safety. But it's not just about the safety of our bodies. There's no wearing helmets or life jackets in this passage, but it's about keeping our hearts safe. Because we know that our hearts are what lead to our actions. So we're warned to watch out for bitterness and anger so that we live with love and act with love. We're warned in this reading to watch out for lies and cruel words so that when we speak, we speak full of God's grace. We're warned to not make room for bad, to avoid harmful feelings and words and protect our hearts. By protecting our hearts, we then protect our actions and through our actions, we live our lives in a way that honors God. So in all things, right, we should remember to watch out for the dangers that might hurt our body and those that might hurt our heart, because avoiding danger is the best way to be safe and honorable. So will you say a prayer with me? And this is one of those echo prayers, so I'll say a line and then you can repeat it. Dear Lord, Lord, thank you you for loving me. me. Help me me. to watch for dangers that might hurt my body or might hurt my head, heart. Amen. Good morning. morning. Today's reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may, be, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of God for the people of God. Will you join me in a spirit of prayer? Gracious God, we have gathered in your presence to hear your word to us. May my words and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So have you ever played one of those word association games, right? You know, where someone says a word and then you respond with the first word that comes to your mind? You know, like someone says dog and you say cat. So why don't we try it, okay? Hot. Cold. Cold. I knew you'd all say cold. And that makes me then think winter. And what does that make you think? Summer. It's kind of fun, isn't it? And it's also, there's probably something to be said about us that we tend to say the opposites, but we'll, uh, we'll save that for another day. Well, this same thing happens to me with scripture verses too. When I read one verse, other verses come to mind. 
So when I sat down this week and read the passage and heard, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, I immediately thought, may your words be few and seasoned with grace from Colossians 4, 6. And then that led me to, you are the salt of the earth. See, that's the season part going with it. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot from Matthew 5. And there's a thread there. These verses all speak about how we're called to interact with one another. Essentially, we're supposed to be salty. Now let's think for a minute, right, about salt and what it might mean to be and to stay salty. Salt does nothing by itself. It's a seasoning that enhances the flavor of a food. It can be used as a preservative. Some people even use it as a stain remover. It's been used for healing, right? Most of us have gargled with salt water at some point in our lives to get rid of a sore throat. It's an odor eliminator. It's got lots of uses, but it's always the same. Salt doesn't change, but salt changes other things. So staying salty means using our speech to change other things, change them in a useful way an enhancing way, like the right amount of salt does. Now remember that Ephesians is written to a congregation and not to individuals. So when we read it, we need to hear those yous as all y'alls. Um, you know, this, the South has something up on us. I, I had a colleague from Kentucky, and it was delightful every time we did this. He'd be like, all y'alls. It's plural, not singular. And the epistle is concerned with what it means to be a community of faith. It's not meant as a self-help book for individuals. Yet at the same time, we each do have our own individual part to play in the community. Our individual words and actions are part of the whole. So how do we help build up the community? How do we stay salty, seasoning our words with grace in order to build up the body of Christ? Well, that's what the author of Ephesians is offering us today. Lots of advice on that. Beginning with speak the truth in love. I mean, this isn't an excuse to be blunt or mean. Remember, everything we say is seasoned with grace. We speak the truth in love, not to criticize and tear down, but to build up. It's kind of like that difference between being a book editor or a critic. The editor suggests changes to make the book more readable, more understandable, more cohesive. And the critic merely praises or pans the book without necessarily doing anything to build up, to improve, or to encourage either the book or the author. And then there's, don't let anger get the best of you. Now, anger is a fact of life. You're going to get angry, but you don't have to let it fester and grow inside you. And you don't have to talk about it to everyone except the person that you're mad at, because that just spreads the anger around. That phrase, don't go to bed angry, means we should deal with anger directly and with a healthy measure of grace. Put away bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander, and malice. That's all those ways, both spoken and unspoken, that we think the worst of people and treat them accordingly. Instead of assuming the worst of intentions or holding people's wrongs against them, or ruminating on the ways that we've been insulted or hurt, hold kindness, tenderheartedness, and forgiveness as the guiding principles for your actions with others. After all, you have received grace and forgiveness from God and from other people. So this one kind of reminds me of Thumper's mother's advice that we hear so famously in Bambi, right? If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. 
It's all good advice for living in community. The epistle reminds us that, of that acronym, right, that I've, to think before you speak, you know that one, right? With T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? Think before you speak, or at least get distracted by trying to remember each letter. And <laughs> I usually get about I is. Notice something else that the author of Epistles says. It's the why we're supposed to treat each other with respect to build up the community. It's why the reading extends beyond chapter four to include those first two verses of chapter five. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. We're supposed to be imitators of God. That's why we need to be honest and kind and build up the body of Christ, the community of faith. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, we must imitate God as beloved children and walk in that same love. And that's a pretty high standard to live up to, right? It's no small task. And so it's best done in community with people who will speak the truth in love sometimes with anger but never with malice, working side by side and building the kingdom brick by brick. Imitating God means being the kind of community that behaves towards one another, views one another, and values one another as God does. That's what it means to be church. Now today, Rita's gonna to become an official member of our congregation. So you're going to want to listen to those. That it's a short little ceremony, ritual. But there are promises that we make to her and that she makes to us in that moment. It's the ways that we'll speak truth with one another in kindness and love. So listen for that and think about what it really means to be this community. The church is called to be a community of care. People may come and go, but the church remains. The church is sort of like a forest, right? Now, you know in a forest, you've got all kinds of different trees growing together. And we know that trees have roots, and those roots extend far. Well, there's something that happens, right, when those roots touch, because there's only so much room down there. So the roots end up touching one another, and some kind of substance is created when that happens. And that substance actually reduces the competition between the trees. They're no longer competing for the most sunlight, the most nutrients. They're somehow now linked by their roots, even if they're different species. And in this way, the trees then share water with one another. If one tree has more water, it can help one that's farther from the water source, sharing nutrients and sharing the sunlight with each other. And that's what the author of Ephesians is saying happens with the church. We become connected, and rather than competing with each other, we help each other each sharing our talents and our resources so that the whole is more complete than we can ever be apart. And we do that by being salty. So maybe you want to carry a salt shaker around with you this week and remind yourself to season your conversations with grace and to live in love. Amen. Please stand and join us for our next hymn, More Like You.
I present Rita Ford, who comes to this congregation from the cornerstone of Faith United Methodist Church in Coventry, Rhode Island. Rita, would you like to come on up to the, we'll put you at the lectern again, since that's become a favorite spot of yours. Yep. Yeah. Then everyone can hear you make your, your promise. Yeah. So Rita has been worshiping with us for a while now and uh, has joined in a number of ways and, and even shared with us that she's a guitar player and so has gotten connected already with the praise band and music ministry team. So um, she has, has and taken And I found out dive. about the book club today. Yeah. Oh, yes, the book club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know there's all kinds of things that, that go on. We forget to tell you everything. So keep asking around. You'll find out more. <laughs> So it is a is a delight to have Rita join us. It's always sort of hard to leave behind the church you've been a part of. And uh, I know when Rita came, she was pretty clear that she wanted to be a part of things here, but she also had a commitment to her home church. Um, and so over time, though, she became more ready to to actually be one of us officially. So Rita, as a member of this congregation, Will you faithfully participate in our ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. All right. So members of the household of God, that's all of you, I commend Rita to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. And now you respond. Rita, the God of grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. And welcome. Thank you. Amen. 
So now as we turn our hearts to prayer, I got a message uh, early this morning that Joyce fell and had to be taken to the hospital and is being checked out. So I know we want to keep uh, Joyce and Jim in our prayers that everything will be okay. Let us pray. God of grace and love, we thank you that you have called us all to be here together today to be your people in this time and place. Help us to speak to one another and with one another with the grace and love that you share for us, the grace and love that we learned through your son, Jesus the Christ. Help us to care for and support one another as we lift all those in need of healing and hope. We especially ask you to be with Joyce this morning and with Jim and with all the others that we name in our hearts. And God, we continue, ask that you continue to guide us on this journey as we navigate viruses and ways to care for one another and ways to live with hope and not fear. God, we ask that you be with all of those who are grieving this day and that you will help us to be your presence and share your peace with all those who need it. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is from heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we, those who trespass against us, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to collect our offering by inviting folks to leave their gift in the basket on their way in or out of worship. And our gifts are a way that we work together as a community by combining those resources so that we might share God's love with all that we meet. join me in prayer. Patient and merciful God, we hear your call to live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Our ears hear these words in our worship. Our minds know what they mean. Our hearts long to follow them. But we know that tomorrow we will be tempted to slip into the familiar life where we ourselves are at the center of your world. And the needs we focus on are almost entirely our own. In our giving this day, help us strengthen our resolve to love as Christ loves us. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Closing hymn this morning is Help Us Accept Each Other. Help us accept. 
accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, your lessons as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people for all, not just for some, to love as as we find them, or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and the healing heart. Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in me, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread. We need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. We knew us with your spirit, Lord, free us, make us one. By God's amazing grace, we are the body of Christ. And because of that, let us go into the world in peace and courage, holding to the good, honoring all God's children, loving and serving the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and all God's people say,